Hello traders, what a fantastic week this has been. I'm Francesco from FreeFX and let's start the video today. First of all, let me show you my actual trading performance. This goes back all the way to 1st of July of last year and you can see how my accounts have been developing. There have been a few dips and the latest one's been like from the 8th of September and that was really just a few days of trying to get through what I was basically thinking was the start of a new trend in the US dollar and also in the EURUSD but actually turns out it was a bit of a, a choppy time so I lost a bit of money there. I put about 20% on my account. This is kind of similar to what happened about halfway through, through this period when I went from about 90 something uh, grand to about 70 something uh, just under. So it was a kind of similar move down but I recovered from that one actually came past it eventually here and I did something similar today I actually went past this um, high on the 8th of September that was my account high then it was 193 something and there was 1935 something actually um, I managed to go up to 194 so it's uh, that's the latest figure updated so this uh, is the uh, 100 day um, simple moving average and it kind of shows you um the relationship between that average and the account pnl um so i'm pretty pleased the total uh, including everything like rollover fees uh the rollover fees for this in total account to about 1.7k and uh, so all together all that together uh give me uh an equity increase of 288 point something percent so that's the total profit I made on this account from the start uh, a year and three months. So as you can see i pretty pleased that obviously I need to dig deeper into these figures because there are things that I, I wouldn't be quite you know very happy about like sort of the volatility at uh, these two points here as I mentioned um, in uh, early September second week of September. So uh, you know these are things that are not attractive but obviously the trend is up there's no doubt that the trend is up and you can sort of talk about reversion and and also um, standard deviation and sort of how how much deviates. So I've managed to calculate the sharp ratio of this, for example, and it turns out it's something like 199 um, as a value, which is uh, you know it's absolutely fantastic, obviously. But then you got to think about well your Sortino ratio, so the downside um, uh, deviation and the downside risk calculation. Um, and I haven't done that, so obviously there's all that to do, which I still need to um, get into. But that's something I'm going to talk about another time when I figure it all out and sort of come back with some figures. But essentially, it is a demo account with FXCM. Uh, I've been with FXCM since the very start of my trading journey, uh, which was September 2012. So it's been exactly eight years. And I still use them because, you know, I'm used to the platform and the way it works. It's very simple. I don't have to think about sort of buttons, where they are, etc. So um, I'm just demoing them now, though. So I actually use Oanda for live trades. Um, and I've not used Oanda since uh, my last round of trading, which ended in, uh, let me think now, August. So I need to wait until January when I've got my next round of capital, which I'm uh, putting together. So. I'll end up for my live trades um, when I start again in January and FXCM has been a um, demo and also live actually in the past so and that is the situation now now why is my account actually going up uh, the other really exciting thing I was going to show you is my CMT so I finished this whole book 630 pages uh, plus extra bits and basically it's a fantastic volume this is the volume one uh, because it's level one exam is coming up in December so I've got a lot to study and I'm doing all my revision I've got all the notes here that I'm writing and I've got all the videos from a provider called Optima and they are absolutely fantastic uh, so I can actually show you that um, and it's the uh, this one Okay, so um, they've got forums, they've got all sorts of stuff that's really, really handy actually. So um, that's the actual forum that you can talk about uh, stuff from the training with other, other people. And uh, there's an actual bit there which is all to do with the CMT level 1 exam, obviously, uh, which you can talk about. So their prep course and kind of questions about that and stuff. And there's also the actual Optima charting, which is actually very, really useful. 
uh, because it has a lot of advanced features for um, back testing and um, other stuff as well. So uh, the other thing I was going to talk about is the um, well, the obviously the course materials are copyrighted, so I'm going to show you that. But essentially, the founder uh, Matthew is uh, absolutely fantastic, and it's always kind of on hand with questions um, if they're relevant to the uh, training program. So that's what I'm doing at the moment and it's really just taking all my time. So I apologize if this video is going to sound a little bit unprepared. Now what a fantastic week it's been and that's why my account has picked up again. I was just waiting for volatility to return to the uh, dollar and sort of major pairs. So actually I've stopped bothering with the S&P because I was doing a bit of that uh, of late but really um, it was kind of out of desperation almost because I didn't really get any volatility from um, USD uh, just uh, for a week or two. And um, But the USD uh, Dixie is actually been absolutely fantastic. And I've been really uh, looking forward to this because it's a, a fantastic way to um, to look at the cycle that I showed in one of my videos. And we are basically coming back up to this level 95. And you can see that it's a really significant level. We've had quite a few touches and we are at a turning point. But also this pickup has really given us a lot to think about in terms of uh, EURUSD. So let's kind of go to uh, EURUSD and think about that. I'm going to stick that one as well. So EURUSD. So this is really what happened to the EURUSD. Um, there was a lot of talk of, um, obviously they're a mirror version of each other. So I don't have to explain that. Uh, but let's go into a bit of detail there. So Eurus dollar here. I'm going to kind of hide the uh, Dixie and try to get the Euro by itself. I'm going to make it into a daily and I'm going to go into the uh, candles. So that is basically where we are. Um, we have this um, very, very, very interesting situation where we were in a way trying to see what would happen with the euro uh, being kind of the darling because of the uh, European Central Bank really, really pushing for support at this time uh, of the coronavirus. But actually what happened here was that um, we had a sort of uh, double top, if you like, uh, or a head and shoulders pattern and um, head and shoulders being head left shoulder and right shoulder and the neckline about this level let's say 117 something 117.50 um, that was broken and we've come basically we've come down all the way to under 117. Now I talked about this uh, a few days ago when I said that the uh, options uh, open interest for major pairs was actually showing a very interesting combination of things and I sort of said well look um, I think there's something in this but we well, just don't kind of take my word for it but if you went and looked at it yourselves you probably know that I had uh, highlighted something that you would have also probably noticed which is the um, foreign exchange options at uh, the strike price of 117. Now, if you look at the um, the puts there at 117 you'll see the number is over 4,000 and there's not really any other of these prices that's kind of pulling out those sorts of those sorts of volumes and that really tells us that 117 was and now is a very strong price interest and it's on puts so people selling um, options at or around 117 anticipating the price would move uh, lower and then they sort of make a profit and that indeed is what happened so it didn't necessarily have a predictive kind of uh, nature but certainly it's kind of come to pass that that's the case now if you notice at 116 next biggest lot of puts is actually there at 3.2 thousand so i think probably we're still kind of moving down and that is possibly where we're heading but um, I've kind of stopped trading now for today. It's quite late. Um, it's into the morning and I'm still up crazy me. But that's mean they're just trying to fit all this in. The situation with the Euro dollar obviously is quite critical because um, we have, if you look at sort of past history, you can go back a little bit there. Uh, we have um, a lot of upside um, that we could cover. 
So clearly this is not a comprehensive uh, total reversal yet, um, but uh, we have other means of checking out uh, this thing. And you know if you've watched my videos that I've done um, a sort of long-term channel of your USD that I can show you again. Um, and that sort of involves a 12-year trend, and that's basically coming from the top here at 158 more or less coming down here and basically starting uh, to be kind of confirmed by all these peaks touching the same line one two three four five and we're just here as you can see now I was kind of prophetizing that this might happen uh, and it was like a little uh, fixation of mine but I didn't really aggressively trade it I actually stayed away from it tried to trade the dollar as well and I uh, was a bit early on that move and that's probably why I lost money uh, indeed so um, but if I actually do it now again because I keep changing my save chart so I'm sorry if I haven't got that and uh, make it into a trend line and sort of do it from there and sort of do it like that if you like that's one and then I'll do it again because it's not really stuck okay I'll just leave it there Oops. Okay, um, this is just behaving oddly, so I'm just going to leave it there. That basically is the trend line. Now, uh, nobody's a magician or a clairvoyant, so let's say that we didn't know this was happening, and we drew it up to here, okay, and, you know, more or less and through that. So we kind of expected things to happen at that level anyway, but um, we weren't too sure that that was going to be the case. I'm just going to make it a bit more clear. And you can see now that we are sort of reversing. Uh, we just broke above that and we're kind of returning to it. These um, levels are quite flexible, obviously, but we're kind of returning under that. Um, what is a channel, essentially, there's a line to be drawn at the bottom there. And uh, so the, the downtrend is confirmed at the moment. Uh, remember, this is a monthly chart. So this is huge, huge candles are being drawn here. And we're returning below that. So the other interesting uh, one is I'm going to do a clean chart for that, but maybe not. Let's do gold because gold is really, really uh, the surprise of the day. And several people have commented on this, um, which is um, what exactly happened to gold. Um, and uh, you saw the huge uptrend. And let's kind of have, take a look at that. Let's have a look at that. So I go to that line because it really. Um, it's just a bit annoying, really. We had uh, the COVID situation here in uh, March, April, May. See that rising? Uh, ignore the red line. That's for USD. And uh, then uh, we had this sudden reversal just now. And uh, instead of gold actually picking up to the 2000 level, it just had a sharp reversal. So we're down to the 1864s. Now, you remember when I said that the, the price around 1921.37, um, it sort of formed, um, actually you see it better in the daily chart, so I'll just give you that instead. Okay, there it is. And I was saying that it was forming a triangle. And uh, essentially we got stuck around uh, this price here. Let me find it again. It was, I think it was about uh, there. Was it here? Yeah, it was about these levels basically. Um, that was the what was the um, resistance in uh, um, March of two thousand and nine, I think it was, or March of two thousand eleven, nine years ago. Um, and then that became support now. So there was kind of um, a bit of a debate as to whether that would, um, uh, you know. That would basically provide the next surge to the upside. And then this kind of thing started happening where we have these um, converging lines. So um, I think you can probably do a triangle in here, trend line tools. Um, yeah, you can probably do this because you've got these kind of converging lines, etc. But I'm just going to do it by hand. So um, yeah, I'll just do it by hand. So trend line one. And two, just in case you missed this before, one, and then I'll do another one here. So, same one. 
and you can see what is happening. Essentially, you had to, and this is not just hindsight because it was happening, you know, week after week. You could see these two lines. Imagine it, you couldn't see this. You just had that, okay. And then slowly pulling this chart out day after day. So the top bit here starts forming these uh, tops, these kind of lower highs. And the bottom is kind of on a flat line. Yeah, like that. So if you didn't take the, the wick bottom, so the low, and just did that, you would have essentially a triangle. Yeah, okay. But either way, uh, the range was getting narrower and narrower, and the breakout was inevitable. This is like textbook stuff, absolute textbook stuff. So, you know, I can find it in this book, I kind of show you that. But essentially, you know, it's just exactly one of those things uh, that um, you kind of come to expect to have a resolution and generally according to you know kind of textbook theory um, these triangle formations um, after a long uptrend tend to have a break uh, to the downside so um, symmetrical triangle uh, descending triangle okay so there's a descending triangle there with um, a break up, sorry, breakout to the upside. Okay, we actually had it to the downside. So, and that sort of breakdown to the downside has been confirmed uh, because if you measure that, it's quite um, a nice, neat little earner. So, if you take a ruler there and measure that uh, breakout from this down to where we are here, it's about 1.3% which is not bad, not bad at all. Uh, now, if you measure this move here from the top of the triangle to the bottom is 2.7. So it's about half. So as I said in one of my earlier videos, if you project this distance, um, the kind of range of the of the triangle uh, from top to bottom, the highest point there, uh, down from the breakout, so 2.7 would give us... Um, I have to do it again. 2.7 from here. It would take us basically to about this level. So if it takes us about 1, 180, it, that's kind of roughly there. Which is sort of around these levels. So, you know, there's, there's a bit to go yet. So if you were trading it short, there's a bit to go yet. Now, uh, somebody, I think it was John Kitlighter from Daily Effects said, that if you took, um, it was either him or somebody else I was listening to, that if you took the um, gold uh, versus euro, for example, um, you find that there's a descending line. I don't know if you can do it here, but essentially if you did, um, let's try something like XAUEUR. Uh, let's see if that's actually possible. Uh, gold and euro. Probably not. Probably not. But um, maybe if I took the dash away. Yeah, so. Here we go. That is possible. Gold Euro. Now compare the two charts. They're pretty much the same, aren't they? So that kind of shows you that it's not just about um, gold being priced versus US dollar, which has been rising. It's actually gold priced versus Euro as well. You can see um, the price is also breaking down. So that kind of confirms that it's not just. So looking at things um, in a wider context always helps, obviously. So that's basically the end of my video. So I've done a lot of. Um, I didn't trade gold down. I traded the dollar up, and then depending on things, so I've been doing experimental things because of like um, support and resistance tend to go around uh, levels. So for example, with the euro, I've done something like taking the euro and going uh, from uh, the break on 117 and that actually happened um, in the Asian session yesterday so the night before now and that was uh, an automated trade so basically just went through uh, triggered the trade and finished it I got myself 4k uh, with that on a short um, when people say nothing happens in, in the Asian session is wrong because a lot of really good things can happen like that 
there's no particular Euro, Euro news, there's no particular um, US uh, news, and yet EURUSD does some fantastic stuff. And it's not lack of liquidity because it doesn't happen between the 10 and 11 uh, period, which is really low. It happened, you know, way after that in a, you know, sort of Asian session uh, peak, if you like. But so, you know, that can happen as well. So you don't have to be there, just kind of set your trades. So that's one thing I've been doing, obviously. Uh, and the other one I've been doing is um, checking the mid levels. So say 17, 16, 50. If there's any resistance there, so I knew whether to trade it down from say 1675 down to 1620, adjust my position uh, size as well for a wider target, or go for something like at the moment I'm trading something like 1 million to 4 million, starting to push towards 4 million now, which is 20 to 1 leverage. But um, obviously, I'm nearing the two, um, 200,000. So uh, 2 million is just like 10 to 1 leverage, so it's not that big a deal. Um, and with EUSD it's quite cheap, uh, so you know, you are pretty well margined for that kind of trade uh, in normal kind of volatility situations. So, and so with that you can reduce your target, obviously, um, your pip values is, is, is great. So um, it really pays to, to have a bigger account, and that's my conclusion reading something on not the noobs uh, the forum that I'm on at the moment um, somebody was saying that they're struggling with uh, an account it was quite a really small account um, because every loss obviously has an impact and and you can't really trade like one penny or one cent um, kind of uh, position sizes you know that your broker will restrict you so if your broker says you have gotta have a position a minimum of like 1k and your account is like um, 10, 10, just 10 currency units essentially. Uh, that makes it makes it really difficult, obviously. So um, your leverage be too high. So this um, return to volatility has actually um, helped me a lot. And if you obviously want to think about um, shorter term moves, as there have been obviously in all this some shorter term moves, and try to decide, for example, if um, when uh, we're approaching uh, a solid level around number like 1700, 1800, etc. Um, there was a bit of resistance, obviously, support at 1700 before it broke. Um, but sort of coming off those levels and the Dixie as well, um, coming off its kind of random levels. I'm using now a 20 EMA, so exponential moving average, and also 50 EMA. So when price goes um, stays within the EMA, if it's below it, then I will continue keeping a short position. Um, or if it crosses below it from above, I will uh, look into going short and then look at my targets there. That's kind of intraday. Um, and also if um, I'm thinking of going short, uh, but price breaks above the 20 and then above the 50, then there's the 100, a simple moving average, and the 200. And those I basically kept uh, as simple moving average um, indicators because I use them for the long term view, the daily view, and I want them to be simple ones rather than exponential. Um, and uh, purely for the reason that, that uh, I don't need them to be that sort of responsive. I want it to be more about the longer trend and if they cross with each other or things like that. Uh, sometimes the those moving averages, the 100 to 100 day, uh, on a daily uh, are so far away from price anyway they don't really give you much indication of where we're going uh, with the Dixie for example now if you go into the hourly four hourly now there's even the 50 is quite far from price um, and the hundred is quite so the dollars really picked up now and um, so um, another one that's coming up tomorrow is the euro I'll finish with that is the euro Turkish lira I'll just bring it up on a separate chart actually because that's probably I'll make it a bit easier to um, and what I'll do is I'll just bring it up uh, here and hopefully hopefully they'll let me just bring up the new chart because this one is so messy now with so much stuff and um, that's a really really interesting one uh, don't know why it's still insisting on this so let me just kind of bring it up to uh, euro DRY 
uh, because that is uh, the central bank uh, rate decision in Turkey tomorrow. It's expected to hold its rate and not actually um, hike it. Now this is, uh, as you can see, um, a very, very long trend and uh, you know, from 2008, uh, so it's 12 years now um, and it's been uptrending essentially. Now you can do all sorts of things and I talked about the RSI in a previous video, how basically broken down um, but it broke to new highs and just continued on its main way. So I've sort of given up trying to predict a top on this pair. I tried it before and I did sell it uh, here in the, in the crisis of 2018 and it was a good thing to see you know, finally you know, there was a bit of a fair value proposition for this and then it just and we've gone past that in uh, uh, well this year really so almost like an anniversary two years and we went beyond that and so it's a real amazing uh, murdering of a currency really just complete devaluation and it's been going on for uh, over 10 years now 12 years so if you bought this, obviously this would have really worried you, this sudden hyperbolic rise that would have been a warning sign. But you could have sold uh, and then gone back and bought it maybe here. But it's really hard. Hindsight is a great thing, isn't it? But the thing is that there's no hike expected. Um, and so I think this might continue higher. Now, I've been tempted and I have bought it, but it's a very expensive currency pair to buy. You gotta buy at the right time of day, so you might get something like 36 pip spreads, 40 pip spreads, and then you know a few hours later it might be like 200, 300 pips spread. So if you try and leverage this up to make it worth your, because per pip is not worth a lot, so you're relying on uh, in volatility, um, and it can it can have, and around this time two years ago it was having like 2,000, 3,000. Uh, pip days um, so even with a, a smaller position you, you can still make some good money there so guaranteed but um, if you add an indicator here for example let's put in um, uh, let's put a average to range and we'll give it a we'll give it a 10 day or something let's see what the value is here we've got 14 let's keep it 14 right so and we'll put it down to a uh, daily and then from the daily we um, have candles for example so you can see it's just uh, buy 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 and then we've got uh, this uh, kind of descending um, ATR uh, so the true range um, is really quite um, in comparison to what we've been before uh, it's not the lowest it's been if you look at July for example uh, if you look at um, the beginning of the year, so around February, I picked up a lot obviously during the pandemic. Uh, there was a lot of that going on. Uh, so we're not at the lowest, absolute lowest. Um, if you look at 2018, for example, just to give you a sense what it was, if you weren't there, I was, uh, we were at uh, that sort of 3,300 um, pips per day your average to range that's average not the actual day on the day itself is it was crazy but so we've not quite got to those levels we're quite restrained now in comparison okay so um we're around the sort of 900 pips per day which is still not bad and that's an average as well so but it's certainly um you know if you wanted to get really philosophical there seems to be a declining uh range so this could be a warning sign as well. If the RSI has failed, this might sort of give us another indication that the range, the movement is up, but the range is, is quite small. Still, watch tomorrow is going to be on. So uh, it could be some interesting news here. Right, I'm going to have to go and uh, get some sleep. So uh, I'm just going to wish you a very good night. And basically, um, I'll try to do more videos. So if you can really, really tell people about my videos but also uh, get some ideas from this I wanted to you know succeed in your trading um, as my results are showing you it's not the work of genius it's really just trying to get consistent trying to cut your losses which I do not be stuck to a vision or if your vision proves wrong just just leave it behind and follow whatever the market does 
So in this case, you know, my uh, Dixie uh, kind of dollar uh, trade is kind of panning out as I hoped. Now, how long this will go on for? I don't know. It could be just a correction. Uh, so we just need to keep carefully kind of um, following this move. And year USD, how much more it can be selling? We don't know. So again, you know, 100 pip to 100 pip, 18 to 17, 17 broke that one as well, which I was not wholly expecting but it, it happened and I got that trade through the Asian session just filled by itself to its target and then today it was kind of hovering between 17 and 16 so a bit of uncertainty there in the second half of the day so you know just trying to kind of uh, stay profitable every day um, regain on losses made uh, it's happened twice now since I started this account where I've come back from some heavy losses but I never let it sort of kill my account, you know, I, I try a few days and if the market doesn't go my way, I just leave it and then start again once volatility picks up and it's easier to, to make that money than trying to try so hard. So thank you for watching and keep the faith and I'll see you in my next FreeFX video. Bye.